Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Wednesday's Q&A. Now listen up, this is the second Q&A Wednesday that we've done. If you guys want to continue to do this, be sure to comment below your question that pertains to chainsaw carving. That's what we're doing here. Wednesday Q&A about chainsaw carving. Just trying to help you guys out with a quick short video in about 15 minutes or less. So without too much more of that, we're going to dive right in. we got a few different questions today. The first question is... Uh, I'd really like to know what you do to preserve the wood when a customer intends on displaying it outdoors. Now, my carvings, I normally carve a carving with the intent of it being displayed outdoors. And so mm, probably 75% of my carvings to 80% of them have an exterior finish. What's an exterior finish? For me, that's an exterior polyurethane. I always try to use an oil-based for a little while, that was really tough to get in my area, so I did have to switch over to an exterior acrylic, which is a water base. Um, I've gotten some good feedback from customers. That stuff's been holding up well, so, you know, I do have some oil base still, and I still have some water base. We'll probably use those up throughout this upcoming year and kind of just see how they do as far as the weather. Now, if you're selling carvings with no finish on them, you know, you can let your customer know, hey, you can acquire an external uh polyurethane paint it on or brush it on do that once or twice a year to keep your carving looking good and protecting from the elements i always recommend they wash it down with hot soapy water in the summer when it's nice out you know with a soft brush or something like that let it dry well and then apply the finish in a shaded area on a warm day um that goes for you guys too you know it's it's a great way for uh carving maintenance right keep it keep it looking great moving on um, what bars and chains can you use on the MSA 200 saw for carving? Can you use steel bars, cannon bars? What's the difference between 43 gauge chain, 50 gauge chain? What is the best? All right, so we've got a couple questions there. This right here in front of me is the MSA 200. It is a battery saw, okay, in case some of you don't know. <coughs> so this is a battery saw. This is the steel MSA 200. Now, this usually comes with a little bit bigger bar. Um, I've downgraded this bar. I have not swapped out the sprocket. Currently, I'm running a quarter pitch chain with a quarter pitch 43 gauge chain 64 link. Okay, so that's what I've got on here. Just a small bar. Now, my MSA 160, I have a dime tip bar. I'm able to do this because both of these saws come with a quarter pitch sprocket. So when you match that stuff up, you want to make sure the pitch is the same, okay? Um, now I can't remember what size chain came on this, but I was able to pop my quarter pitch bar on because the one I took off had a quarter pitch bar. So you want to make sure that sprocket matches. How do you make sure all that stuff matches up, right? It sounds like I'm just mumbling here. On your bar, you got a bunch of numbers in here, okay? I know you guys can't see from there, but when you're looking directly on your saw, it'll either be here or here you'll have all these numbers and when you look you'll see one slash four p that's quarter pitch below it you'll have 0 0.043 that's your gauge and backward you'll see 64x so 64 links if you have a stock saw you look at those numbers and you go okay it's a quarter pitch it runs 43 gauge chain the links are what match the bar that you have so this means you could go out and downsize that bar if you wanted get a dime tip bar whatever that may be, as long as the pitch matches what it is that you're running. So if the pitch on here is quarter pitch, which it is, that means you have a quarter pitch sprocket and you can mix those things together. Now, somebody might get on here and say I'm wrong. That's fine. Let's hear it. And, uh, you know, we can, we can go from there. I don't know everything, guys. A lot of stuff that I'm doing, I'm researching or I'm figuring it out myself, okay? So that is what it is, just being honest um what is the best 43 gauge chain or 50 i think that just depends on what you're doing For the sake of this video i wanted to show you 43 gauge chain i didn't have a saw ready this is 63 gauge chain so i know it's not 50 but it's 60 all right might have been hard to see there can you guys see the difference in chain size all right so we're talking about the kerf 50 60 gauge chain all right let's be exaggerate 50, 60 gauge chain, 43 gauge chain, how wide it's going to cut. I prefer this bracelet chain. 
for a lot of stuff, a lot of small stuff, um, furring, detailing, making small cuts. Why? It's not removing a ton of material. I can be more precise. The saw doesn't jump around as much. It bites and goes. It's a small chain. I feel like I have more control. So I use this for a lot of detail work, 43 gauge chains. When it comes to bucking up firewood, cutting a log to size, in blocking, which is not detailing, you're just blocking your carving, I'd like the 50 to 63 gauge chain. Why? It removes material quickly. It's got bigger teeth, so it's going to cut faster. It's usually on a bigger saw. You get that stuff cut, blocked, removed, out of the way. You can move on to detailing. So bigger chains, blocking, um, bucking up, cutting to size, smaller chains, detail work. All right, that's my opinion. That's how I like to do it. That's how I have my stuff set up to go. Moving on. Does the steel MSA 160, 200, 220 have a variable speed or is it just on and off? Can you run them like a gas saw? So the 160, the 200, and the 220 is steel's line of battery saws at the moment. Um, and those are the three that I have. I have all three of those. Now, with a gas saw, you can kind of feather it and, you know, get right on it. These, yes and no, you, you can, but it's not the same as a gas saw. You kind of on and off, on and off the trigger instead of being able to hold the trigger. I mean, it, it takes a little finessing, but you can kind of do it. Um, there's really no need to always be on it, though. You know, you're, you're making marks, and you're just on it, and you let go, and you move over to here, and you get on it. So, I mean, there's not a lot of feathering like a gas saw, but... There is and there isn't because the chain is still spinning. So you let off and you're on and, you know, it's something you kind of got to play around with. As far as a variable speed control, no. It's your hand on the trigger and it's, again, it it's not the same as a gas saw, but it's, it's possible. Uh, so hopefully that answered it. None of those saws have a variable, you know, you can't adjust the speed anywhere on the saw other than the trigger. What about using a die grinder to take the bark off? Now, in last week's Q&A, we talked about removing bark, so you don't have to worry about bugs and all that kind of stuff getting in the wood. Uh, talking about using a bark spud, kind of a peeler to remove the bark, things like that. So I have, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that's where this question is coming from. What about using a grinder to take the bark off? You definitely could use a grinder to take the bark off. Um, in my opinion, though, it's time consuming. It's so much faster to even grab your scratch, your, your chainsaw carved T-wrench, put the T-wrench in your hand with a pair of gloves. Sometimes when it's a small piece, you go down on the log, pop it away, and you can peel that bark right off quickly. Um, for bigger pieces, though, a bark peeling, a bark spud or bark peeling spud works a lot better. Now, I did have, actually, I had one more question. Um... Do you use an airbrush? If so, what size nozzle? What brand of airbrush? <clears throat> so my airbrush is actually in the house from the truck carving video I did because I airbrushed it inside. So this is just the box. But the brand that I use is called Pache. P-A-A-S-C-H-E. Pache. What I'll do is I'll have a link to this airbrush from Amazon in the description below. You can go check it out, see what the price is and all that. I'll also have that bark peeling spud there. Um, and probably a few other things that I use to carve. You guys buy through those Amazon links. They really help the, ch the you know, support the channel, and I really do appreciate it. Now, this is the Pache H series. This is a single action airbrush. That means all you do is push down and it sprays. So that is variable. How much you push down is how much it'll spray. They have dual action, so it's down and pull back. They got a bunch of different stuff on there. I actually have two of these. This is from the newest one that I got. The first one that I had, I just used to paint that truck I carved for you guys. Um, I've had that since I was like 15. So they, they don't wear out. They work great as long as you maintain them, keep them clean and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is it though. This works really well. H series. Um, the question was nozzle size. <clears throat> I don't use a specific nozzle size. It comes with different ones that'll give you a fine line to a wide spread. So I'm always switching those out depending on the on uh, the project. So again, I'll link this, I'll link the bark peeler, I'll link a few other things that I use all the time through Amazon down below in the description. You guys find those links. Big shout out to all my channel uh, members. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate you guys 
uh, being members to the channel on a monthly basis, you buying me a coffee, being on different tiers, you guys rock. I really do appreciate it. You know, we just got over 15,000 subscribers, so that's all because of you guys. Again, that's awesome. I thank you guys so much for hitting subscribe, asking these questions, leaving me great comments and feedback. Um, you guys are awesome. I really do appreciate it. So if you have a chainsaw carving question that I haven't answered yet, guys, be sure to comment below this video and uh, hopefully get that in for next Wednesday. As of right now, I just went through all the questions that I had. I probably should have spaced them out a little bit better, but I wanted to get everything out here for you guys. So ask your carving questions down below pertaining to saws, pertaining to uh, carvings, techniques, whatever, whatever it is, safety gear, whatever I can help you guys out with, ask it down below and I will do my best to help you out. Hope you guys have a great day. Check out some videos popping up and I'll see you guys later. Bye.